This lift goes almost half a kilometer underground. When the doors open, you have a long drive ahead of you. But what is at the end of this subterranean journey? This is where you'll find the vault that stores all the toxic waste that's just too dangerous to leave lying around on the surface. Dumps like these contain industrial waste that could contaminate land and water if left above ground. Everything from heavy metals to poisonous chemicals is stored here. This story begins in Saxony-Anhalt in Germany, where potash is extracted from underground mines. Potash is used as a fertilizer and the mining process has two benefits. Firstly the potash, secondly the large holes it leaves behind. The potash was laid down millions of years ago. As an inland sea evaporated it left layers of mineral deposits. Today these layers are found deep underground. Mining the potash is a simple process. Drills are used to prepare holes ready for the industrial explosives which are inserted. The mine will then be evacuated and the explosives detonated. When the dust is settled, the miners will head back to the face with big tractors. They scoop up the loose potash and it's sent above ground to be processed into fertilizer. When the mining's done, the toxic waste arrives. It too will be processed, ready to be stored far below ground in the hole where the potash used to be. This load is arsenic, which can be very hazardous to people's health. Before it's buried, it's sent to the lab to be tested. Scientists check there is no liquid mixed in with the waste. Any leakage could be disastrous. The next test is for gases so a protective mask is needed before opening the bag. The buildup of certain gases in the waste could cause explosions, yet another danger factor in the storage of toxic waste products. Once checked and cleared, the arsenic is ready to be stored in the dump deep below ground. But before it's sent off, there's one last thing to do. The scientist takes a sample. The reason why will become clear down in the mine itself. Loaded into large containers, the arsenic is taken underground. With the waste heading for its final resting place, the scientist takes his sample to a kind of underground library. This is the records department, but instead of books, these jars contain a sample of every waste product stored down here. The storage system acts like a map, so the scientists know what kind of waste is stored and where to find it. He adds the sample from the latest batch of arsenic to the end of the line. Meanwhile, the dump is being carefully prepared for its impending delivery. First, any loose material is removed from the ceiling. Rock falls might rupture the specially sealed containers. Next, the workers will drill holes in the ceiling and bolt in special reinforcing steel rods. This will act as a further layer of protection to prevent the roof collapsing. The rods penetrate about 1.2 meters into layers of solid rock. Once they're firmly fitted into place, the rod ends splay out like wall plugs gripping into the solid rock layer to stabilize material in the loose layer. This extra reinforcement can help support around 14 tons of rock in an 80 centimeter diameter around the rod. The mine contains several million of these helpful reinforcements already. As well as the ceiling, the floor is also being prepared. Special vehicles flatten the loose rubble into a stable road so that the toxic waste transporter can come and go safely. There are hundreds of kilometers of roads throughout this mine and it is possible to get lost if you don't know your way around. With the ceiling stabilized and the road prepared, the waste can now be brought in. 
Special tractors pick up the bags, keeping human contact to a minimum. Often a byproduct of modern industry, toxic waste is an increasing problem. And one solution is to bury it deep underground, in this case, where the potash used to be.